Thank you, Michael. Well, uh, again, I want to thank everyone for coming and uh, having this opportunity to see the, the marvelous research that's going on amongst all the grad students and students that are here. And, and I really encourage everyone who's uh, from industry to, to uh, take the time to visit the posters and uh, meet the grad students and, and hopefully hire them after they graduate or as interns before they do. So, um, whoops. Is this here somewhere underneath? Okay, so again, I'm John Bowers, Director of the Institute for Energy Efficiency, and uh, I want to certainly give an overview first of what the Institute is, and it's a broad institute, uh, across, cuts across campus, it involves the College of Engineering, and Rod Alfernis, the Dean, is there, and next to him, uh, Pierre Wiltzius, Dean of uh, Letters and Science, and uh, it also involves the Bryn School, as you'll see, it's about 50 faculty, 180 grad students, and uh, there's six groups that we've organized, and, and four of them are represented here in this photo. The first group you'll hear from uh, a bunch uh, today is lighting. It's 20% of all energy and has a big impact. Tall Margulith will talk later today about uh, just the tremendously uh, research that's going on here. Um, I think you've all heard that Suji Nakamura won the Nobel Prize for his original invention of the LED, but so much more has happened since then, right? And there's a group of 10 uh, faculty working in this area. And uh, what's listed here are two major accomplishments that's been achieved recently. One is the very important issue of, of how do you make high power LEDs and the, the problem of, of droop, and that was solved theoretically um, as well as ex demonstrated experimentally uh, due to this OJ enhanced, uh, uh, photon enhanced OJ recombination. And the other one you'll hear about today, of course, is, is laser lighting rather than LEDs. And again, that's something that SSLEC has been very uh, leading the world in, and uh, Sora Laser and, and, and others. So um, it's really, really very exciting. Steve Denbars runs this area. Um, the second group is uh, electronics and photonics. And uh, again, We've had the utility forum this morning, and we saw the whole issues about converting from, obviously, PV to, to storage back to uh, the grid, and this conversion is a big issue. And Umesh Mishra has led, you know, world-leading effort in gallium nitride technology to, to solve this problem and, and make converters much more efficient than they are today, using the larger band gaps of, of gallium nitride over, over silicon and better high temperature performance. And, uh, so that's research going on here, and then a startup that he's been involved in, Transform in Santa Barbara, has been uh, commercializing that. That was the electronics end. The photonics end is here, and you'll hear more about this in the presentation by Luke Thigarajan a little later. Um, but Luke is a CMOS designer, and the issue is ICs typically spend 40% of their energy getting just signals on and off the, the chip. So if we want to get ever faster processors, ever higher capacity, that becomes a real limit. And uh, a solution is what's shown here, which is stacking chips up. It's planned for the processor industry. It's planned for combining memory and processors together. And most importantly, the general plan is to have optical interconnects here to solve this power problem and also to solve just the, the uh, IO capacity problem. So whereas you can maybe get out of you know, 5,000 pins, 10 terabits electrically off a chip, optically you can get 10 terabits per pin. So you can get literally uh, petabits of, of data off, off chips this way. And so these 3D stacking approaches is very much, I think, where the industry is going. And uh, the accomplishments here have been our focus on integrating electronics and photonics together and uh, scaling that up. So most photonics today is done in fairly small wafers. This, is, this approach is being done at 300 millimeter wafers now at Intel. And uh, uh, Hewlett Packard is represented here. They're, uh, pursuing this for, for supercomputers and, again, uh, data centers. And there's a lot of sensor applications, and, again, the whole goal here is by going to large area substrates, we make very, very cheap silicon photonics and, uh, consequently, sensors for automobile industry. And what's shown on the right there is a, is a LiDAR chip integrated on silicon. And, again, if, if you look at Google's self-driving car, 
the one they've shown in the picture so far has a $22,000 LiDAR unit on top, and that's what we want to replace with low-cost silicon. Buildings are tremendously important for energy efficiency and for the Institute, and there's a, a large group here that uh, is run by Igor Mezik, in the, primarily in the mechanical engineering department, and uh, we heard this morning from Ecorhythm, which is uh, commercializing a lot of the algorithms that's being developed here to collect data and, and control buildings and, and run them much more efficiently than they are today. Computing area, this is run by Fred Chong. Um, data centers are not that large. One, it says 1.5 percent, a few percent of global energy. But data center usage is growing so fast that improvements in efficiency are absolutely essential. Even today, the cost of the energy to run a data center is as large as the cost of buying all the equipment to go inside the data center. So any improvements there are, are huge. And uh, this group is funded by a number of groups, particularly Google in particular. And one of the big advances that they did under that Google contract was developing these barely alive server states and, and so allowing you to reduce the amount of total energy consumption. And uh, again, you'll hear more about that later today in, in the posters. And then the general area of energy production and storage, um, run by Guy Bazan. So renewables are important, and, and Alan Heger and uh, others have are, are been developing polymer-based uh, solar cells, and there's a large thermoelectrics group here, and uh, Galen Stuckey and others have been focused on energy storage, at, at solving that. And so uh, these are three accomplishments. So the nanostructured work, that's mainly out of the materials department, so novel materials, work that Art Gosser and Chris Palmstrom, uh, Ram Shashardi are doing, uh, so as to make artificial materials with higher CBEC coefficients than exist in nature. Um, and then uh, the work out of Guy Bazan's group and Fred Woodle and others, new organic materials for cheap uh, solar cells, and then recently hitting new efficiency records, and you start combining multiple ones of these together, and it starts to become quite, quite interesting. And then uh, the last one out of Galen Stuckey's group, developing hybrid battery capacitors for uh, better storage. And so uh, we'll hear from Guy later on uh, in this session. Then the last group is the economics and policy group, and this is primarily the Bren School and the economics department. And uh, as you can see, it may be a little hard to see, but in the center is renewable energy and energy efficiency, and the impact is having in other areas. And obviously, uh, clean environment is a goal. Lower, lower cost, uh, less energy imports, less uh, spending of, of cash going overseas, job creation, and, and so forth is, is the center of it all. So it's all how do you change behavior, how do you get these new policies to happen. And so San Juan Su uh, in the Bren School leads this area, and they've been very instrumental in a number of UN studies, particularly. Uh, for uh, sustainability, and in general, keeping all the rest of us honest, right? So when we look at a photovoltaic effort or a thermoelectric effort, what is the total life cycle analysis of that, and does it make sense to, to proceed? So uh, it's a very strong group. So again, to all the industrial partners that are here today, thanks for coming. Um, Jen has been the primary contact. I'm really grateful for all of her organization here. And hopefully, if you come on campus to meet with faculty, Great. If not, please or, you know, come see here, and, and, and we'll organize that, and uh, and just engage with research, engage with uh, uh, students in terms of internships. Lots of grad students and undergraduates take internships, and uh, and so forth. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Jen for the rest of the program. <laughs>